Now, people may not necessarily agree with that news conference that Spicer held this weekend, uh, but I think what you what you're getting a flavor for is that this will not be in a, a simple or easy um, way to go for the media with the Donald Trump presidency. The short list. And, and if he if he disagrees with them, um, then th- th- clearly they're going to give him hell. Uh, whether, whether there are facts in dispute or not. Uh, let's go to Fox News Radio's John Decker right now, who's uh, at the White House and was also at the uh, press briefing uh, last week as well. John, how are you? Hey, I'm well. How are you, Mark? I'm doing well. Did the media have hard hats on or anything today? <laughs> no, I mean, look, <laughs> I, I, we have pretty thick skin. I was in the briefing room on Saturday when, uh, when uh, Sean Spicer lit into us. And, uh, look... I don't think it was a good start for him to do that, uh, but, you know, this will be the, his first opportunity to, to take some questions from the media, from the press corps that covers the White House, and he'll have to get used to this. It obviously takes place every day in the White House briefing room. Yeah, they, they plan. They clearly plan to be contentious when, when they feel that it's necessary. I, I would agree with you. Um, I've seen Sean Spicer in a lot of situations. He, he appeared a little flustered. And a little off his game on Saturday, so I, I just I'm not sure that one was well thought out. <clears throat> well, you know, I think that he was rushed out there. Okay. My guess is that President Trump uh, told him to make such a statement, and uh, he did just that. He took his marching orders from the president, as press secretaries have to do. Um, but again, not a good way to start out, you know, especially when you make some inaccurate statements in, in terms of your statement, um, which indeed he did. Uh, and just in terms of uh, whatever the count was that they took issue with? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, I mean, you, you can't, you, when, when you are the White House press secretary, it's different than being a spokesman for the Republican National Committee, where Sean's coming from. Um, you really are expected to come into the briefing room, and if you don't tell the truth, you know, you've lost credibility. You have to come in there, you have to tell the truth, or at the very least say, I don't know, you know, but this is a, an opportunity for, for Sean to right the ship. Um, I have confidence in him. I think he's very good at what he does. Um, and like you said, Mark, perhaps he was off his game on Saturday uh, because he's a solid guy, and uh, he's very good in terms of being a spokesperson. He's done it practically his entire adult life. Uh, John, what are you expecting to hear today? Now, clearly, unlike Saturday, I'm assuming more like a regular press briefing, Spicer yeah. will take questions today, right? That's right. It, you know, I don't know how long it will be. I'll uh, give you a sense. You know, when Dana Perino, I've, this will be the 11th press secretary that I've worked with. When Dana Perino was the White House press secretary, and she was the last press secretary for a Republican president, uh, her briefings typically lasted about 40 minutes. Uh, Josh Ernest uh, sometimes... Uh, have lasted upwards of an hour and 20 minutes. Um, you know, my guess is is that this first briefing will be somewhere in the middle. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it does go, you know, 50 minutes to an hour. But, you know, he's going to get lots of questions about this first week for President Trump. Sure. And we know we know the president's done a few things already um, when it comes to executive actions, what, on TPP and abortion and some other issues? Uh, that's exactly right. I think you, you, you uh, pretty much... Uh, distilled what they were. Um, they specifically were, one, withdrawing the U.S. from the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, the other freezing federal hiring for the military, and the last one prohibits uh, U.S. non-governmental organizations that receive federal funding from providing abortion abroad. This reverses an executive order that President Obama signed his first week in office, and he was reversing an order that George W. Bush signed his first week in office. So this is one of the things that presidents and opposing parties do uh, once they uh, assume the office of the presidency. Well, ought to be an interesting uh, press briefing when we get to it. John, I'll let you go. I know you got a lot of work to do. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mark. I All right. Appreciate, appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. John Decker from Fox News Radio uh, reporting to us right there from the White House. And right now we're roughly 15 minutes away from hearing that initial press briefing from Sean Spicer. It's not like we haven't already heard from Trump today. That's what's going to be a little different about this administration. Uh, Donald Trump had a meeting this morning with some top business executives and allowed the media in while he was having the conversation. Maybe, just maybe, 
if not everything is filtered through whether or not this makes us look good or not before they decided whether they were going to allow cameras into meetings, that's kind of what you got a lot, well, from a lot of recent administrations. I'm not just going to call out Obama on that. Let's face it. Um, the the Bush folks were likely to do that too. I mean, if it, if there were discussions going on that they didn't, they weren't comfortable having the reporters here, then they chased them out. This morning, 